Ladies and gentlemen, let's move on to our next speaker. Uh, we know our young people, our students, have the ambition to start up their own digital businesses. Uh, our next speaker is someone who made that dream a reality. At the age of just 22, which probably seems old to some of you, um, ancient compared to me, um, he set up Student Beans uh, with his brother. They now employ over 40 people and have 3 million visitors from campuses across the UK. Uh, so let's hear how he did it. Ladies and gentlemen, a huge round of applause for James Edder, please. Uh, good morning, everyone. Um, thank you very much for, for the introduction. And um, following on from kind of setting the scene, and Maggie did so well, I'm, I'm really, really excited to be here. Um, before I go on and, and to share a bit of kind of a, a story, what I'd love to do, though, is to get a volunteer, uh, please, to, to come up to the front. So I'm looking around for a, for a brave soul. So a volunteer there, come up to the front. While they come up to the front, I know there are a few seats around. And people standing at the back, if you want to come to the front and join the seats, feel free to do so. I thought I'd set that. So what's your name, sorry? Kieran. Kieran, James, great to meet you. Cool, thank you very much. Um, what I'd love to do is just give you a book. That's it. So Kieran, round of applause to Kieran. You can go and sit down. Thank you very much. So, so why did I start the presentation like that? Well, I, I'm standing here as, a, as an introduction. As it said, I was, I was 22 and I had this idea, but my first actual business idea was when I was 13 and I ended up creating, went to our local park, took photos of uh, people's dogs in black and white, and then went back the following week and said, are you interested in buying these pictures if you like them? How many people own dogs? Pet lovers in the room? Yeah, so we thought that that was a good, good idea. So starting, and that was just from nothing, starting something when I was just 13. So the reason what I'd like you to do is ask yourself, why didn't you volunteer? Why didn't you volunteer? So perhaps because you thought something bad. How many people thought something bad was going to happen in front of all you lovely people if you came to the front? You might trip up, you might embarrass yourself. So this is a lovely quote for me, which is, what's your thoughts, they become words. What's your words, they become actions. What's your actions, they become habits. What's your habits, they become character. What's your character, it becomes your destiny. And as I see it, my challenge here today in just the few minutes that I have to share with you is to get you thinking slightly differently, or maybe massively differently, because things need to change for there to be made a difference. You know, a number of you were here in the room at 2013, Digital 2013, but it's the people in the room, I believe that if everyone in this room comes together, young people, people in business, people in government, we have a real opportunity today to make a difference but we need some change thinking. If you do what you've always done, you'll get what you've always got. So my challenge here today in the next few minutes is just to get you to start thinking, how, how can we think slightly differently? In the 1970s, some research was done, and it said, and death came third. What's the most two feared things in the world? The first most feared thing in the world, apparently, is public speaking, so I'm doing that now, so bear with me. And the second most feared thing in the world is to be networking, is to go in a room full of people and network. You know, it's amazing how many people, when you're told when you're growing up, don't talk to strangers, and then we're expected to go into the world of work and network and connect with people. And I'm so excited to be sharing this message right at the beginning of the next two days to hopefully encourage you and to set the expectation that please go and network and speak, and I'm going to get you to do that uh, in a few minutes as part of this session as well. So if it's okay with you, I'm going to share with you, as I said, a bit of a story, a journey. I'm going to go at quite a pace, uh, so hopefully keep up. But the aim is then you can take one or two things. Hopefully everyone in the room can, can take some things from that. So when I was 17, I ended up doing Young Enterprise. And one of the things that came out from the research as well, it's about learning by doing. And so there's only so much, perhaps, you can learn in the classroom and being told, but very much this new generation and young generation, it's about getting an experience and learning and failing fast. And when I was 17, I went into a shop. I was selling, the idea was a, a website called needanumber.co.uk. And this is based in 1999, when there was still um, uh, internet connection through, through the phone, so that funny noise that most younger people in the room won't know about, uh, dial-up internet connection, where my parents would say, get off the internet, I'm trying to make a phone call. Uh, some of you remember those days. So we went into a shop, and this woman screamed at me, get out, whatever you're selling, get out of my shop. And the reason why do I share this with you today, I share this with you because if you've got an idea and you want to make something happen, you've got to have belief in the idea. 
What do all businesses want to do? Probably a lot of them want to do, they want to make money. So I was believing, I had this idea, and I thought if we can help this business make money, then that would be a really good thing. Um, and it was all about advertising and promotion, so it was a website listing, website listing service for a directory based in London. And at the end of around 20 minutes, I asked her a few questions, and we left with money in hand. So another lesson I'd like you just to take from this, what's the worst thing that can happen? When I asked for a volunteer earlier, and thank you, Kieran, for coming up, when I asked for a volunteer, what was the worst thing that could happen? Because most of you told yourselves the worst thing that could happen, and you didn't create something positive. And that's what we've got to stop and, and start changing and, and thinking about. So there are a few brands I ended up working with before I graduated, and I, I went on kind of quite a journey and organized club nights and events and different things, but one, one of the things I did was for Gala Bingo. And I ended up doing telesales for Gala Bingo. And the reason why I shared this very small story was because I had to make around 250 phone calls in a day. Now, when you're told no, how do you generally feel? Not great, right? You ask for someone something, and you just, someone says no, you don't feel that great. So I asked, I, I had to make these phone calls, 250 phone calls in a day. How many no's did I get in a day? I got over 700 no's in one day. Why? Not because I wasn't very good. My conversion rate was around 10%, so I got 25 people signed up to a free membership for Gala, Gala which was, was a great com uh, conversion rate, apparently. But the key thing that we had to get them to say, and we had to ask the question three times. So I call it no training, not sales training. And it's about building that layer in resilience. And I'm sure all of us have had experience when you want something, perhaps as a kid, you're very resilient, you keep going. But then as we grow older, and I'm sure all of us you know, in this role, we're going to go back to our various, to the government, to our jobs, to schools, and maybe we'll have an idea and we'll want something, but then your superior or someone in your team says, that's not a very good idea. Remember this session right now, and it's our responsibility to push that no, to make it a yes if you believe in that idea that you can then really make the difference. So then I carried on at a university. I went to the University of Birmingham. I organized a big 24-hour uh, ball, a big party. Um, I was a brand manager for Yellow Pages. And you'll see what I'm talking about, my university experience, whether you go to university or not. It's about these experience, about learning by doing and having a platform and opportunities. The other thing that I did, um, so when I asked for a volunteer, to set the scene as well, it was my first lecture at university. There were 300 people in the room, and two people came into my lecture, and they said, can we have a volunteer? And I sat there thinking, I'm not going to volunteer. I don't want to put myself forward for this. I don't want to embarrass myself in front of the 300 people I'm going to spend the next three years of my life with. So I sat there, arms folded. It's not going to be me. The person in front of me put his hand up and went to the front of the room, and they gave him a, a, a similar gift. And they go, OK, you can sit down. And so he went to sit down. And everyone in the room was like talking, what, what, that's not fair. Why did I get given? Why didn't I volunteer? And they said, life's about opportunities. Come to this room, 6 o'clock, Monday evening, and we can tell you more about the opportunity. And this opportunity was an organization called ISEC. So again, a leader, it was a leadership development organization based in over 90 countries worldwide. And I applied, I got selected to be involved in this organization. And again, why do I share this with you? There were other people in my year group that were in that same presentation, but didn't turn up at 6 o'clock. And I remember saying to them, why don't we go and find out more about this together? And they said, no, you know, I'm doing my hair, I'm going out tonight, I'm, not, I'm busy. And I remember then being selected and going on a work placement to the Philippines. So I went to the Philippines, all expenses paid uh, by HSBC, an amazing, life-changing experience. And I came back that September after this experience, and I remember my friends, how was your summer? Oh, I was working, I was doing a bit of work at home, or I didn't get something or whatever. And they said, where were you? I said, I was in the Philippines and with HSBC. They go, oh, that's, that's not fair, you're so lucky. And, you know, I don't believe in luck, but I do believe in, in about kind of opportunities and making things happen. So in terms of networking and events, um, you know, what I thought I'd do, just really very briefly, to set the expectation in the room, is for everyone to go and meet someone today, just very briefly, that they've not met before, and everyone to get involved in this. So what I'd like, I'm going to give you a line, because the biggest thing that stops us, I think, you know, it was amazing, I was walking around before, and I had my microphone on, a few people thought I was going to break into song, uh, which I'm not, maybe later, but the, <laughs> the context was, though, that people on their phones in the breaks, and I'm, look up. Speak the people in the room today are the people, young people with jobs and opportunities or connections and, and everyone in the room if we collaborate. So what I'd love to do is literally, you've just got a minute, if you can stand up 
and just go and meet someone at the table next to you and introduce yourself and just share what are you passionate about, what do you really care about. So everyone up, I expect to see everyone on their feet and go and meet just one person and I'll call you back just in a moment. So go and meet one person, shake your hand and, and introduce. James, great to see you. You're right. Yeah, good. Thanks so much. Good. <laughs> Hi, yeah, you're right. You can't get onto the website here through the. How can you not? Oh, it's don't worry. Okay, fair enough. Oh, thank you very much. Okay, good. Well, thank you for sharing. I'm passionate about travel and helping young people and making. Okay, can we have everyone, everyone just hold, hold the conversation just for a moment. Shh, shh. So you can stay where you are, there's one more question. I know it's amazing, when I get used to start talking then you won't want to stop, but what I'd love to do is go and meet one more person and just share what keeps you awake at night. So just go and introduce yourself, one more person. I expect to see a bit of movement and go and find one more person, what keeps you awake at night. Hi everyone again, so if everyone can grab, grab a seat, please grab a seat, that would be fantastic. Thank you very, very much. Thank the person for sharing, shake their hand, thank you, and, uh, and grab a seat again. So, so just while, while you're all kind of grabbing your seats again, just have a think, you know, when you've built that connection and even though it was just for a minute or so, when you then next see that person, you'll then already acknowledge them and you'll, you know, you'll ask them more easily how their day was and what, what they were doing. So, break the ice and, and help. I'm very conscious of time, so I'm going to very quickly kind of run through um, a few more stories. In terms of setting the scene for then when I was 22, I graduated, I had a number of ideas, um, and this one idea kind of really stuck with me. And it was all around young people coming of age, gaining independence, leaving home for the first time, and all these different challenges. So we thought, you know, the young kind of environment, it can be very confusing and disjointed. Young people can be very fickle. What do young people really want, and how can we really keep up? And so when I asked for volunteer now, I gave, away, uh, I gave away a book, and the book was similar to this book, it was called The Naked Leader. And when I was graduating, lots of people said to me, you're too young to set up a business, you need more experience. And I read this book in a very simple and powerful message. Imagine if you couldn't fail. Who would you be, where would you go, and what would you do? So I applied for a few different jobs, and I didn't get those jobs, I'm gonna skip over that, I didn't get that job, and I thought, in that moment of failure, basically, I applied for a ISEC for a year placement with them, and there were 10 people standing for five jobs, and the successful candidate had a big jug of water poured over their head. And it sounds like a terrible experience, but it was a very real experience. You know, most of the time when you don't get a job, you tell people, oh, I decided not to apply anyway, or I decided I didn't really want it. But 
it was in that moment that I was in a room similar to this size, three, four hundred people who all saw me not get this opportunity, and I felt like I had failed. And in that moment of failure, I thought, what, you know, what, what do I really want to do? What's the purpose? What, what, what can I make a difference for? And I had this idea as a business, and I thought, imagine if I couldn't fail. And then I picked myself back up and created this website. And the idea was how can we help students save money and how we can help businesses uh, promote to university students. So this is my brother and co-founder, not the bean, the other one. And um, Michael um, was, did economics at the University of Nottingham. We had this, I had the idea, and he came up with the name in the early days. We called it Student Beans because it was around baked beans on toast being a staple diet. So the idea of student beans to become a staple for student life. And now we work with a whole load of global brands. Um, and as we said, the website now does around 3 million visitors a month. Um, we do a website called uh, Freshers Fields, which is um, an online freshers fair. Um, and we help and do number campaigns kind of over the year. We've been featured a lot in the press. But the key thing is what we do is kind of helping brands understand, access, and engage uh, the youth market. We do a lot of research. We're launching an event this week, actually, in, in uh, New York, which is very exciting. Um, but the kind of final thing, just to kind of wrap up, that I wanted to share, we also published a cookbook, which is really exciting. We've got a location-based deals app, which is great. But it's about in the right audience, in the right moment, and the right contacts. And we've worked with a load of brands. But what I wanted to share was about a vision and about thinking bigger. And I was with the founder of LinkedIn, and he was talking about why aren't there more billion dollar, more billion pound businesses? You know, and it was sad to hear that less than 10% of people in Wales believe that the next big thing can come out of Wales, because I absolutely believe that it could. And for us as an organization, there's a book uh, by Jim Collins called Good to Great, which talks about big visions. And our 25-year vision is to touch the lives of 100 million young people every day. And it's about making a difference, and that's our North Star. And that's about when people on our team come into work, we're making a difference. The other thing is it's not about myself, it's about the team. We've got a team of over 40 people. A fantastic African proverb that I heard, that if you want to go fast, go alone, but if you want to go far, go together. And it's about the team. It's about what everyone can do and the people in the room that can do together. So it's also about breaking, there's a book called First Break All the Rules, and I believe our education system is broken. I believe it's broken because we do assessments and we say you're great at A and B, but you're not so good at C, and we do this in work as well. Let's work on that C. Let's try and get that C up to what A and B is like. But a very short story, there was a, a frog and a scorpion, and the scorpion's trying to cross the river and says to the frog, please, can you help me cross the river? And they go back and forward a bit, and finally, the frog agrees. But the frog's still worried that the scorpion's going to sting the frog. So the scorpion gets on back of the frog, and they're going across the river, and the scorpion stings the frog. And, why, and, and they're going floating to the bottom of the river, and the frog's like, why did you sting me? And the scorpion goes, it's in my nature. And the point is, we're all in potentially relationships and work, and we try and change people. But why don't we enable people to focus on their strengths and deliver and be the best that they can be? Because I believe, and why I wanted you to get to share what you're passionate about, I believe everyone in the room has some strength that they can contribute and what they can do. So make it so, because a vision without action is just a dream. An action without vision just passes time but a vision with an action changes the world. So three kind of top tips. In a moment, I'm going to ask you all to stand up. And I'm going to ask you to stand up to, as a sign that you believe that in this room we can make a difference and you can contribute. There are too many conferences and events where people get very excited, but then don't go back and don't follow through. So what I want you to do, and I know there are some things that we can sign as well as a commitment a bit later on, but I'd like everyone in a moment to stand up and if you'd like to stand up now, please, that you are going to take action, and as a result of this conference, that things are going to happen. So can everyone please stand up? And if you can't stand, please raise your hand. So these are some of the lessons over the last nine years that I've learned. And one is it's about taking action. It's about having ideas, but it's about doing something. The second thing is about learning by doing. So as we're all standing here together, it's about participating, and it's about contributing. The third thing is about keep going. It's not easy. If it was easy, everyone would be doing it. Life is not a rehearsal. As we continue to stand here together, there'll be questions. You can come and speak to me. I'm here around all the rest of the day, but I want to leave a quote with you to really think about so that we can together really make a difference. But 20 years from now, you'll be far more disappointed by the things that you didn't do than by those that you did. So throw out the bow lines, sail away from the safe harbour, 
catch the trade winds in your sails. Explore, dream, discover. Thank you very much.